Hi everyone, my name is Bharat Sankar Narayan and I'm a Principal Product Manager in Microsoft Machine Learning Server. And along with me today, I have Bora Baran from Tableau. Bora, can you introduce yourself? Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Bora Baran. I'm a Principal Product Manager at Tableau Software, responsible for advanced analytics. Awesome. Uh, can you spend a few minutes sharing with what scenarios that you were planning to show today? Uh, of course. Uh, at Tableau, we're known for our vast variety of connectivity options, uh, but SQL Server has a special place for me because it's the most used database among Tableau customers. Uh, because of that, I was very excited to hear about uh, the in-database analytics capabilities that were added in the past two years. In fact, I did a whole session at Tableau Conference 2017 just a few months ago going through some use cases for in-database analytics. Uh, and today, uh, I'm going to talk about mainly two different scenarios. One will be using SQL Server's integration with R to do forecasting, sales forecasting. And the second one will be using SQL Server's integration with Python to do sentiment analysis. Fantastic. I'm excited to see how these capabilities that we have baked in SQL Server is uh, being brought uh, to light with Tableau. Shall we jump into some code to see how that's done? Of course. All right, we're looking at how a store procedure is invoked from within SQL Server. And here we have SQL Server Management Studio with um, a stored procedure that is pulled. And I see both T-SQL as well as some interesting R code also with it. Bora, can you spend some time explaining to us how this is all made? Uh, sure. So in this case, we're using uh, the data from AdventureWorks database that comes with SQL Server. And uh, you could see there are uh, two main parts in our stored procedure. Here highlighted is the embedded R code. And here is the SQL statement that actually reads the input data for the R code from AdventureWorks database. What we're doing is using uh, the forecast package from R, and uh, you can install all the packages that you need. There is no limitations on SQL Server as your analysis requires. Then going through the steps to create a forecast that uh, takes into account seasonality and trend, and that will give us a, a forecast as part of this output data set in our code, which will be returned as a SQL table with the following data types uh, expressed in this last statement. Okay, so to let me just play this back to you so that I understand. So what you have in here is a stored procedure, and then you also have in there embedded R code. And then what's interesting is that you actually pulled in the forecast package, which was an R package that was installed within SQL Server. So in essence, you're actually getting an R package getting installed, which is what uh, you're using for this uh, particular example. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That is correct. And also you have some embedded SQL statements right below that allows you to actually do some selects. And uh, that essentially is then producing uh, a result from this. And uh, another thing I did here is I used two parameters that I'm passing to the stored procedure. Here is the periods, uh, the length of the forecast that I would like to get out of this, and the, uh, the size of the prediction interval. I can say, give me the 95% prediction ah. interval. Awesome. Now that we have seen this, uh, the SQL Server part, I'm excited to see how this all works in Tableau. Can we jump into that portion? Sure. Let's connect to our SQL Server database from Tableau and take advantage of that stored procedure we just created. Here you can see my sales forecast sort procedure. I'll just drag it into my view. And here I get a pop-up dialog asking me to provide information about the length of the forecast. I will say uh, 12 months in this case. And the prediction intervals, let's say 85% prediction intervals. And we're executing the start procedure with those inputs and the data from AdventureWorks. And we'll get a table back, uh, which we'll see in a moment. And the query is getting executed in SQL Server, right? Yes, that is correct. So let's look at our results. Here I can see I have my actual data with the dates, my sales value. And since this is not something we're predicting, it's coming right from the database. There are no prediction intervals involved. 
And at this point, we're starting to get the predicted values going into the future. Uh, it has the prediction and the uh, associated prediction intervals. Now I can quickly build a visualization using this data. Uh, let's get our dates, indicator, and sales. I'll just create a line chart. And in this case, uh, let's drill in a little bit more so we can see some details. Here is uh, 12 months of data that you're seeing, including my forecast. And it's marked as predictive values. So this is a really simple way of uh, bringing the data into Tableau uh, by invoking the R code running right inside SQL Server. Very cool. I had a quick question for you, Bora. I see that uh, the actual is actually at the bottom and the prediction is on the, on the top. And that's because you're using the actual values to actually, uh, is, the, is that getting used for the predictions that is happening? Uh, in this case, uh, the actual values are provided to give the end user some context. Okay. So what happened uh, thus far and what we expect to happen in the future all in one view uh, to give them a better understanding of their data. Okay, and now let's try to see if we can make this more interactive so our end users can change the length of the forecast and prediction intervals by themselves. For this, what I'll do is I'll create some parameters in Tableau. Now, parameters allow me to pass uh, values through the form interface uh, in the Tableau. Let's say I want to create a parameter and call this uh, prediction intervals. So, Bora, this is very similar to where the stored procedure has parameters, except that over here the parameters are a ways to interact with the uh, Tableau desktop. Is that what it is? That is correct. So, this allows you to provide a domain for the valid values of the parameter. Uh, so, your end users don't have to worry about what is a valid value for prediction interval, uh, how long of an inter uh, forecast is meaningful. Uh, so, it, it sits on top of uh, SQL Server stored procedure parameters, essentially. Yeah. And so here you have, you have, I see that you've entered 85, 90, 95, 99. Those are the intervals that you have uh, picked up. Is that true? Yes. Uh, so these are the things I chose for my end user, the consumer of the uh, view, uh, as the valid options. Ah, OK. And I can create the same thing for uh, the length of my forecast. Let's say length on this one. And again, it's an integer. And uh, I make it a list. Let's say it's six months. 12 months, 18 months, 24 months, and so on. And I can even uh, make these things more readable by adding the units to it, six months, 12 months, and so on. While SQL will only get the uh, integer value. So let's keep it short. Now, so, I am, go ahead. Um, so this is really cool because I can see a report author who actually provides this. And then as a business user, they could just go, go in here and then be able to see uh, 12 months, 18 months, etc. Is that is that? Yeah, the point? you can you can almost think of this as like a semantic uh, layer on top of a sort procedure because uh, the end user of the sort procedure may not understand what are valid inputs to it by limiting, constraining uh, them to uh, what they can select and giving them human re readable labels. You're making them uh, making it a lot easier for them to make the right decisions when they're using your sort procedure. Very cool. So now I'll map these values instead of uh, fixed values. I'll map them to the parameters. Here is the length of my forecast. And here is uh, the prediction intervals. Now, uh, when I go to my sheet, uh, and this will update based on the values I just selected, which are different from what I manually entered, you will see my forecast will look a little different. Now I can expose these in my UI, show parameter control. I can change this from six months to 24 months or 18 months. And as I change it from the UI, the stored procedure will run with these new parameters and give me a new prediction. So every time you actually change the parameter over there, the stored procedure get executed in the SQL server. And then the data, the, the data based on those parameters that you have passed, you get back the results, which gets displayed over here. This was more of a production code example where DB admin uh, created a stored procedure for the end users to leverage. It's kind of like the standard forecasting model for the entire company. I see. So um, what, uh, what if uh, in a scenario where uh, I don't have the ability to create a stored procedure, you know, and sometimes I'd, I, I may not have access? That's exactly what my right, uh, next scenario is about. And that is? That is uh, sentiment analysis with Python. 
ah, so you're going to show us how you can actually use some of the free trained models that is actually available uh, in SQL Server and specifically in SQL Server 2017 because you're using Python. I'd love to see that. Okay, let's jump right into the example. Let's uh, start at Tableau again uh, by connecting to our SQL Server instance. So Tableau can run SQL at multiple stages. Um, for pre-processing, we offer this experience called Initial SQL. Uh, I'll add my SQL code directly into Tableau this way. Uh, let's go to Data Options and select Initial SQL. And I'll just copy paste my SQL code in here. And let's walk through different steps in this code. I'll make it a little larger so it's a little readable. Notice we're creating a temporary table to save our results. Uh, it has a certain structure here, tweet ID, user ID, text, timestamp, and a score of sentiment. And uh, then I will define uh, the Python code here, uh, you can see between these quotation marks. What this is doing is connecting to Twitter's API and notice that I'm loading pandas and Twitter packages to do this analysis. Once I get my data for the hashtag machine learning for the last day, we're enforcing it since a certain date in this case, I'm parsing it, uh, the status values, and I'm using a pre-trained machine learning model to get the sentiment scores. And then take those sentiment scores and turn into positive or negative tags. And finally, I do uh, take the results and insert them into my temporary table that you could see here. In this case, we are looking for hashtag machine learning, but you could be analyzing social media data of different types for any topic. Uh, for example, you can analyze product reviews about diapers or headphones, if that's the most relevant to your business. Uh, Bharat, why don't you uh, tell us more about uh, the pre-trained model? Absolutely. Um, this is really cool. What I see, what you've seen, what I see you have done is essentially taken your Twitter data and then you're running it through one of the pre-trained models that we have, which, gives, which is basically the uh, sentiment analysis, which in itself has been trained with lots of data, and it's been using uh, deep neural nets to train it, and it uses Microsoft CNTK. The other pre-trained model that we have, uh, we have a couple that you showed one, the other one is about uh, image detection. It allows you to detect uh, features of the image. There are several use cases like image recognition, image classification, et cetera. So these are pre-built and it's available ready to use. So you don't have to do any model building. It's just there for you to use, hence the name pre-trained models. Great. Uh, now for this code to run, I actually have to enter my Twitter credentials. So we'll take a pause here and continue after I enter them. Now that I enter my password, I can click OK, and this will create uh, our temp table for me in SQL Server with the data from Twitter. OK, now let's read this data from inside Tableau. I'll do a select statement here. So as you're pulling this up, it's a day's worth of data, is it? That's what you pull? That's exactly just one day's worth of data. And that could be a lot of data, right? A day's worth of Twitter feeds? Uh, this is just for the hashtag uh, machine learning, so we were not getting uh, that much data. And you can see I have my sentiment scores, a positive, negative, uh, as well as the user ID, Twitter, uh, tweet ID, and the actual text itself, if you want to read about it. Nice. So uh, since this is just one day of data, and my plan from the beginning was to have this data accumulate over time, one thing I can do is uh, create an incremental extract for this uh, and schedule uh, refresh nightly on Tableau Server. Let's create an extract in this case. I'll define my extract as an incremental refresh, and uniqueness will be based on tweet ID. So if uh, the same tweet appears uh, by accident in the queries, I can say uh, it's already there and ignore it. In that way, when I come in every day in the morning, I can just get my refreshed data automatically waiting there for me, right? Exactly. 
And one thing this will circumvent is also the limits Twitter uh, imposes on the amount of data you can get in one go. Uh, for something like machine learning, it's unlikely that you're going to have 10,000 tweets on a given day. But if you try to get all the data at once for an entire year, you'll probably hit those boundaries and you will get down sampled data. Now let's create my extract now. Now that we have our extract, let's publish it to the server with the uh, incremental setting. I'll come here and publish the server. And uh, I can specify a name for it. Uh, tweets SQL demo. And I will uh, set the incremental refresh schedule to, let's do every day at 11 p.m. once a day. And uh, what I can do is I can also embed my credentials here so it doesn't keep asking me every time it needs to uh, access. Now I can publish it to Tableau server, and it is successfully published. Now I can build a visualization out of this to see uh, what our data looks like. However, it will take several days for me to get anything meaningful out of it because it, will, uh, it needs to accumulate. But luckily, I have already built this visualization and ran this example a few days ago. So we have some results. Let's take a look at how machine learning is perceived. It looks like the sentiment for machine learning is pretty positive. I think it's good news for us. I love it. Looks like we have a lot of uh, love for machine learning. We talked about two scenarios today, most relevant to retail, but this, these techniques could be applied to any domain, if you like. Uh, thanks for providing me with access to the databases I needed Absolutely. for these demos. Uh, but can you tell us a little bit more about if I were to uh, install ML services or SQL Server myself, uh, what steps we, I, I would have to go through? Absolutely. Uh, for this particular uh, demo, we used a box that already had SQL Server 2017 uh, pre-configured. And so we went, followed a, a few steps, a bunch of steps to actually enable uh, ML services. It's all documented. It's available in MSDN, and I'll include a link part of this presentation. Um, the other option is, as you set up a new SQL Server 2017 instance, you can actually, in the setup wizard, just like you choose any features, you would just choose ML services, and you have the option of either choosing R, Python, or both, and depending on what you choose, you get ML services installed. And the third option is, on Azure, on SQL Server 2017 across all editions, including the developer edition, when you create an instance, you actually have the option to just flip a switch for in one of the settings to say I want ML services. And when your instance gets created, you'll have ML services enabled. That's as simple as that. Great. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you today here. And I've learned quite a bit. And I saw some great visualizations from Tableau leveraging the power of SQL Server. And I'm uh, really excited to uh, share this and also looking forward to uh, doing more with you folks in the future. I appreciate all the time. Uh, and folks who have been watching this, we have a blog that you should go and check out with all the information, including the links. Uh, and I'd like to thank Bora for his time. Thanks for having me.